Arul, when we start, Tu vois, ils sont là, moi aussi on me voit, mais par contre, euh, le, euh, on n'entend pas l'hommage. Mais on n'entend pas. C'est lui qui en parle. Test du parle. C'est bon, hein, je pense que c'est plutôt. Là-bas là Oui. Est-ce qu'on entend Oui, on ah, entend. Pas de jour. Ah, ah vous avez dit, you have to mute people, they are all. C'est ça. J'ai eu un très gros téléphone avec quelqu'un. Ah. Anglais Oui. Ça fait longtemps que je n'ai pas pratiqué, pratiqué, mais je me débrouille. Si j'avais passé trois mois avec eux dans cet institut du sud de l'Inde. Hein Génial. Et donc, normalement, aujourd'hui, il devrait y avoir des, des gens, des militants qui l'a formé. Bon, les tribus, dans les pêcheurs, les paysans, les femmes. Father Joe, can we start? Father Joe, can we start? One minute, one minute. Yeah, we can. We can start. We can start. Okay. We can start. Yes. Okay, dear friends, good day. On behalf of the organizing group, Friends of Duarte, I welcome you to this celebration of Duarte's life 
on his first posthumous birthday today. This group that just got together for this occasion comprises the director of the ISI, Father Joseph Xavier, the director of CEC Delhi, Miss Lokesh, the executive director of Fedina, Sebi, Anne Brito, Dilip Kamath, J. John, and myself, Nalini. I am based in Trivandrum and one of Duarte's old friends. I was introduced to Duarte by Father Henry Falcon, who was the then director of the ISI in early 1973, before Duarte actually joined the ISI. I have learned much and have been inspired greatly by Duarte at a time when involvement in social action was changing and with whom I had several arguments as we did not always agree. That was the beauty of the friendship. As we will spend the coming hour and a half remembering Dwar, I will just explain the sequence of the program. As you know, there are some who are physically present at the ISI and the rest of us from different parts of India and outside are online. We are aware that all who are participating are here because of their love and appreciation of Dwar, and many would like to say a few words. Nevertheless, we have requested a few people to speak, and we have done this only so that a wide spectrum of friends who knew Dwar in different capacities and at different times of his life in Bangalore will provide a wide canvas of Dwar's thoughts and involvement. So I will initially name the speakers and at the end, if time permits, the floor will be open for others who desire to say a few words. I do hope this is acceptable. We are very happy that several of Duarte's family are also present. I would also like to mention Anne, who has requested that she is not asked to speak, but I acknowledge how she cared for Duarte especially in his last years when he was ill and how she welcomed friends to their home after his retirement. So with this, let us begin with a song rendered by Duarte's grandnieces and nephews. This was one of Duarte's favorite songs is what I understand. So Arul, may we have the song please?
thank you, Maite, and all the group there. We are happy to see Duarte's Barreto, uh, Duarte's brothers also. So, friends, we will move on now. Um, we will start with um, Nicholas from Bilipura. Nicholas is a grass, grassroot level activist and farmer leader from Tamil Nadu. Nicholas, the floor is yours. Yes, friends. I was uh, an of product from St. Joseph's College, Trichy. And it was at that time I met Dwarf. I was uh, very much impressed by his speech during that meeting, especially on social analysis of the Indian context. When I shared my own experiences in my village, working with the Dalits, after the meeting, he asked me, to come to ISI to share my experiences with the participants who are attending the three months course. It was during the railway strike in 1974. I was in Bangalore ISI to share my experiences of really organizing the Dalits around the issue of discrimination and oppression. And it is from that time on, birds, I was very close to Dwarf. After that, I, I, you see, I was mostly linked to the left movement in Tamil Nadu, not with the CPA and CPM. So I was always emotional and I used to really share my anger against the feudal system. But it was Dwarf who really mentored me. And he asked me that emotional actions will not end anywhere. You have to systematically organize the Dalit community and fight against the discrimination, but also build a kind of class alliances in the villages. And you have to really move. It is based on his training and, and motivation. I started to work, especially after the 1978 Vilupuram atrocity, in which 12 Dalits were killed and more than 2,000 houses were burnt down, in which I happened to be an eyewitness the whole night of that organized attacks on the Dalits. I came back to ISA again. And I started to, because it was Dwarf who introduced me to Corinne. And with CS, I started to work. And every time, I used to invite Dwarf for a kind of motivation program. And from that time onwards, we are still, the, as far as I know, all my team members, gray haired team members, and also the young members, they're all trained by him. Many of us participated in many of his inter interactions, and it was he who introduced us to many of our friends here. Alex, Ashim, many of the friends are here, and with whom we started the reflection and we are still continuing our journey. And we will continue our journey with the spirit which Dwarf had really spotted in our team. 
not only my team and also my family members <laughs> thank you thank you nicholas we will now move to dilip dilip kamar who has a long work experience with workers in north karnataka dilip please unmute um thank you nalini it gives me great pleasure to celebrate the life and work of uh, doart my old friend uh, like just now nicholas said i also met uh, doart in a political uh, meeting non party political formations was the theme in scissors and uh, i was representing a maharashtra group at that time even though i belong to north karnataka and i was working with uh, north karnataka workers the organized workers problem workers at that time and uh, i i represented the maharashtra with whom i was working before or uh, coming to belgaum and uh, uh, we met during lunch he uh, called me to his table and said uh, uh, will you come and share uh, your experiences of uh, how you started working with uh, workers and that is how in the very first meeting uh, we became friends and then subsequently i used to come very often um and then uh, every 3 months he would call me for the meetings and i would share with him uh what, what our uh, issues are what our uh, movement is our struggles are and then slowly i realized that the kind of critique i used to have of the left parties uh we, uh, he was more sympathetic to left parties and i used to argue with him that they are they are they are not marxist parties and so on so i came from uh, gandhi and background uh, well i i would say at that time i used to do of society but work in the satyagraha the door was uh, you know nurturing different people different ways you know like uh, thousand flowers bloom kind of and then Uh, he would encourage people to reflect on uh, the ideology or the ideas they have of work and raise questions so that they will rethink about it and uh, formulate their own ways and that's why i know of hundreds of people uh, who were influenced by him and who got their way clear not necessarily they were molded in the same thing in fact that was that was his greatness uh, so that is one Uh, the other thing is i was also working subsequently uh, with the tenant farmers of inam land 12000 acres of land and uh, this many people wouldn't know so that's why i would share only that uh, part of uh, his life hey, his 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 uh, uh, way of relating to communities if you ask me uh, some some of the friends may not like it but for all practical purposes he was a foreigner Uh, he was a, a portuguese govan uh, born uh, uh, person uh, who studied in france and he when he came back to india he hardly knew uh, good english but then when he came to uh, our village uh, in kittur uh, i was uh, trying to organize the 1200 uh, tenant farmers there uh, to gain uh, land rights and i had I, i found the difficulties of working with the staff i am a, i am a very bad manager and administrator i am a very bad boss and uh, uh, durth was a fantastic uh, administrator manager boss whatever you call it so i requested him and he came there and you know what he did the three activists who considered themselves staff members of pedina they were not working properly and i was getting a big headache so what he did was without understanding a word of kannada what he said was that these activists are working for you people 
the the tenant farmers organization that we had created gudwad kulwalli gudda the wakuta was the name of this federation he said they are your workers so you have to get work from them he will give the money to you you pay them and you extract work from them that's all he he understood all the problems he got the problems of uh, working there from the farmers i was translating of course but then the such an easy way in an hour the meeting was over getting to know the issues getting to know how we were trying to strategize and how lazy these uh, uh, people have become they were they were because they were, they had a different background this he could do in one hour's time so a foreigner kind of a person without knowing the knowledge he could get the gist of the issue and sorted it out and handing it over to uh, the uh, community there when i saw that i said uh, this is another angle which i was not aware of because otherwise i had seen him only in the uh, seminars that uh, uh, we would all conduct for social action group networks so that is uh, how uh, my friend dorte was and uh, he 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 uh, you know supported and nurtured uh, people like me i learned many tricks from him and uh, i would owe him uh, uh, forever uh, and there are are many like him i was not alone thank you thank you all thank you dilip um and now we will go to gabriel gabriel is a professor was a professor of social analysis at the uh, tamil nadu theological seminary in madurai um gabriel will you unmute and start please gabriela has not joined nalini gabriela has not joined we move to babu matthew i am waiting for her to join okay babu please take over babu babu is the professor at the national law school in bangalore and he has been a long time trade unionist as well so babu please thank you thank you nalini i am very happy that i knew duarte and and for a very long time visiting them at their home was always a very special experience there were many things we shared in common and when i look back i remember that the first person who introduced me to the other side of green revolution was duarte uh i must also mention in the note that friends have circulated they describe his qualification as a phd in economics from sorbonne i think that's the first time i'm seeing it in writing uh, that duarte was uh, from sorbonne and a doctorate of course i had come to know but i always remember he would never let anybody know what his qualifications were during the early decades of student activism food insecurity was always analyzed with population explosion and hence the first the fact that the green revolution multiplied food production several times naturally attracted special attention it was duarte in the early 70s who introduced me to the other side of the green revolution especially the link between the political economy of petroleum industry and the green revolution package another early memory of mine and of my interaction with him was his special effort to introduce us to simplified literature on marxian economic analysis and the pedagogy of using it in study circles during the next phase of my interaction with activist groups in south india organized by duarte out of which nicolas is a leading example he would often invite me to share my trade union experiences i vaguely remember that what he particularly drew attention to was economism within the within the organized sector the dynamics of trade union 
and its link to political parties and the utility of ILO standards, particularly the core labor standards and decent conditions at work. It is this last theme which I think Duarte promoted quite consistently. I used to be surprised that activists would return to this theme in their next session with Duarte, which was many months later. Through all this, what I realized, especially in retrospect, was the special quality of friendship with him and Anne. It was always a pleasure to uh, be at their place and spend time with them. And I wish I had done that more often. Friendship and comradeship went together whenever we met with Dwarth. I remember a recent South Indian movie. I'm not sure I know the language. I can't recollect the language. But in that movie, you know, somebody asks an innocent question. And the question is, who is a comrade? And the answer is, you know, when you are in great difficulty and there is nobody on your side, and you find somebody who unconditionally supports you, that person is a comrade. I'm extremely happy that I came to know Comrade Duarte Beretto. And uh, it's very important to remember that uh, uh, whenever we went to his residence, you know, the warmth and the priority of issues that came up spontaneously is as if, as if all those issues were discussed just yesterday. Let me conclude with the last line that friends of Duarte have put down in their invite to this memorial. Let us celebrate Duarte Beretto's life, his values and his vision. His legacy must live on. Thank you. Thank you, friends. Thank you, Babu. Uh, we'll move on now to Jay John, who was the former executive director of the CEC in Delhi and closely relating to workers of several sectors. John, please unmute. Yeah, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, uh, uh, see, I think it is really wonderful to be here and celebrate Duarte. Um, uh, I, 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 I just uh, say a few, just a very few things. Um, and uh, see, uh, in an earlier note, I have uh, I have written some people live on earth and merge into others like salt that enhances value of anything that it gives uh, it gets in touch with, but without asserting its exclusive identity. The act of sublimation of converting those who make contact with them to a higher plane, helping them to know themselves identify their vocations and converting them as capable of taking leadership positions wherever they are. And that's what Duat has done, probably also to me. Duat responded to the challenges. I'm just going back to the situation in which he was emerging. Challenges raised by a historic context. He did this when he returned to India in 1970s from Paris. And let me discuss just two aspects of this intervention. In 1970s was a period of great social and political churning in India, which in fact led to the imposition of emergency in 1975 and the curtailment of civil and political rights. The period leading to it during the period and immediately after that was the period when social action groups emerged in India. The word social action groups uh, are different from a non-political articulation of NGOs, civil society, or CSOs. Social action group differentiated itself from charity-oriented work and apolitical development work which were carried out by religious organizations and other registered societies at that time. Social action group said oppression and exploitation cannot be addressed without structural transformation. The action group said transformation is 
of society is not possible without restructuring of class and power relations. Conscientize, mobilize became the slogan. Building of movement became the catchword. The worker movements outside trade union framework, Adivasi movement, Dalit movement emerged in different parts of the country. It led to the coinage of the term non-party political formations. Since 1970s, Duat played a historic role in the firmament of such processes and movements. He played a role of an organic intellectual. That is the second point that I have to say. He transformed the way how the leadership is to be built in social political action. While emphasizing the importance of education and social transformation, he challenged the role of educator or the leader in the process. For him, the education was more a reciprocity between the worker and the intellectual and not a one-way process. More in the line of Paulo Freire in understanding of pedagogy of the oppressed, he emphasized the humility of the educator, the reciprocal learning, and at the same time maintaining the authority of the educator. Wow, how many areas he created organic intellectuals. And he was paid to and remained an organic intellectual. And that's what uh, uh, he was. I also just wanted to emphasize one more aspect, uh, which is this, the ability to be with the people when in crisis. As uh, I was working with CEC, CEC went through a lot of crisis. He stayed with us. And so he remained as a personal friend. And I, as Babu has said, I was, whenever I was there with him at his house, such a warmth in which he, he has received. So it is not only the personal kind of a relationship, but as I said earlier, the kind of leadership that I mean, responding to the social context that he did will have to live on. And that's what he did. We would like to have more of Duarte's even at this point of time. Thank you. Thank you, John. Um, is Gabriel back? Or we go to Alex Toscano. Alex? We go to Alex. Alex, are you there? Oh, Alex is present. That's great. I am missing something because I don't want to cross my time. And uh, there is so much to speak and so little time. But life is also one that gives enough opportunity to learn and enrich yourself. I will just read out because that would be easy, faster. I met Dwarf for the first time in 1974 during a training program of Foyka of Animators. His idea struck a chord in my mind as I was grappling with the existence of massive poverty and exploitation, which I have experienced in my own life and in the society. I was enthusiastic to learn more from Dwar's presentation on structural analysis. Dwarte perceived my enthusiasm and honesty in my purpose, and he showed willingness to further discuss the problems of exploitation, structures of society, etc. He introduced me to Paulo Freire and his book, Pedagogy of the Oppressed. Since that book was banned in India, my association with the Free University prior to the meeting of Dwarf. They cyclostyled this pedagogy of the oppressed book, and we studied that. I kept visiting him to learn more. Dwarf was willing to give me his time. Meanwhile, I had also begun to study the writings of Karl Marx and Lenin. He found me good enough to be able to give some classes to the participants of three months course. With my progress in the study of Marxism, he asked me to take classes 
about 40 hours in three months course on political economy. We, that is Stan Dwarf, we created another kind of programs, three weeks program during the summertime for sisters and clergymen and youth. Stan Dwarf had been strong torch bearers of socialism in India. My relationship with Dwarf did not get restricted to sharing of ideas and ideology. We became intimate friends. We would go to MG Road late in the evening, visit the Lakeview ice cream parlor and have ice cream. Often we would buy two bottles of beer and come to his room, sit on the mat and drink. I would get knocked off in the middle of my drink and tell Dwarte all about my pains and anxiety. During the time of my crisis in life, he was my strong support and he encouraged me. He proved to be a very affectionate and moral booster friend. Soon I became friend of his family. I visited his house in Margao, I think. I met his mother. And then I realized why Dwarf was such a warm-hearted person. Apart from his brother Karmu, Louis also became my friend. Since he was studying in St. John's, we met often. I enjoyed warm-hearted relationship with his sister, Terry. It would be incomplete if I do not tell you about the fascinating relationship Dwarf had with Henry Falcon, the then director of ISI, another extremely warm-hearted person. They had utmost respect for each other. I was lucky that Henry blessed my marriage. After Dwarf got married with Anne, I drew the newlywed couple to their home in my Jeep. I remember this with great fondness. Dwarte introduced me to many great personalities from whom I have learned a lot and we have enjoyed friendship. Ajit Roy became my great friend. Franca Hutar, such a great personality, became my friend. When Dwarf's health situation had become a cause of concern, I called Stan and informed him and suggested that he should come down to Bangalore. Stan had decided to come to Bangalore as Stan had decided not to come to Bangalore as my repeated promises to visit him in Bagaychat were not kept. But when he inquired from Anne about Dwarf's condition, he decided to come. He came and stayed with me. His arrival was a great celebration of friendship of old colleagues. Corinne, Dwarf, and many friends. He was ever so grateful to me for this. A day before his bail petition could come up for hearing, Stan asked Father Fraser to organize a video con chat with me. I was Alex? impressed that even in the ICU, Even in the ICU, Stan had carried my phone number. He asked me, what happened to Dwar? Then he cried. Then he said he would get bail and stay in one of the desperate houses. You could come and meet me. Then we will talk about Dwar, how he passed away and about the jail and its inmates. But Stan did not keep his promise. He left all of us. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. I'm sorry. I know it's very difficult to speak for a short time. Um, if Gabrielle is there, Gabrielle, will you unmute, please?
Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Okay. Well, uh, this was all very emotional, and I'm now starting to think uh, to to have to talk on the thinking process. <laughs> and uh, there is a contrast, of course, in topics, and it is not so easy to do that. Um, I. I What happened, Gabriel? We can't hear you. Gabriel. Gabriel, we can't hear you. Gabriel. We can't hear you. Nalini will. Yeah. Yes, Father Joe. Let us join it later. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Then let's get to the song that the group from Karnataka is going to sing. I think they are all there at the ISI. So we are welcoming them. Please do render your song. You must hurry to the mic. Please don't waste a lot of time. Jaldi maadi appa. Time agate. Okay, there they are. ನಾವು ಬೆವರನ್ನು ಸುರಿಸಿ ದುಡಿಯುವ ಜನ ನಮ್ಮ ಬೆವರಿನ ಕಾಲನ್ನು ಕೇಳುವೆ ನಾವು ಬೆವರನ್ನು ಸುರಿಸಿ ದುಡಿಯುವ ಜನ ನಮ್ಮ ಬೆವರಿನ ಕಾಲನ್ನು ಕೇಳುವೆ ಒಂದು ಭೂಮಿಯಲ್ಲ ಒಂದು ದೇಶವನ್ನ ಇಡೀ ಭೂಗಾಣವನ್ನೇ ಕೇಳುವೆ ಭೂಗಾಣವನ್ನೇ ಕೇಳುವುದು ಸಾಗರ ಸಾಗರ ಮುಟ್ಟುಗಳಿವೆ ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಪರ್ವತ ಪರ್ವತ ವಜ್ರಗಳು ಸಾಗರ ಸಾಗರ ಮುಟ್ಟುಗಳಿವೆ ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಪರ್ವತ ಪರ್ವತ ವಜ್ರಗಳು ಸಾಗರ ಸಾಗರ ಮುಟ್ಟುಗಳಿವೆ ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಪರ್ವತ ಪರ್ವತ ವಜ್ರಗಳು ಈ ಸಂಪತ್ತೆಲ್ಲ ನಮ್ಮದೇ ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಖಜಾನೆಯನ್ನೇ ಕೇಳುವುದು ಈ ಸಂಪತ್ತೆಲ್ಲ ನಮ್ಮದೇ ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಖಜಾನೆಯನ್ನೇ ಕೇಳುವೆ ನಾವು ಬೆವರನ್ನು ಸುರಿಸಿ ದುಡಿಯುವ ಜನ ನಾವು ಬೆವರನ್ನು ಸುರಿಸಿ ದುಡಿಯುವ ಜನ ನಮ್ಮ ಬೆವರಿನ ಕಾಲಕ್ಕೆ ಕೇಳುವೆ ನಾವು ಬೆವರನ್ನು ಸುರಿಸಿ ದುಡಿಯುವ ಜನ ನಮ್ಮ ಬೆವರಿನ ಕಾಲಕ್ಕೆ ಕೇಳುವೆ ಒಂದು ಭೂಮಿಯಲ್ಲ ಒಂದು ದೇಶವಲ್ಲ ಇಡೀ ಭೂಗಾಣವನ್ನೇ ಕೇಳುವೆ ಇಡೀ ಭೂಗಾಣವನ್ನೇ ಕೇಳುವೆ हम मेहनत करने वाले हैं हम अपना हिस्सा मांगेंगे हम मेहनत करने वाले हम अपना हिस्सा मांगेंगे इस देश नहीं इस देश नहीं हम सारे दुनिया मांगेंगे इस देश दुनिया मांगेंगे सागर सागर मोती है यह पर्वत पर्वत ही है सागर सागर मोती है यह
ತುಂಬಾ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ಸ್ ಎಲ್ಲರಿಗೆ ತುಂಬಾ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ಸ್ ನಾವು ವಿಲ್ ಮೂವ್ ಟು ಫಾದರ್ ಜೇವಿಯರ್ ಹೂ ಇಸ್ ದ ಡಿರೆಕ್ಟರ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಐ ಎಸ್ ಐ ಫಾದರ್ ಜೇವಿಯರ್ ಪ್ಲೀಸ್ good evening friends i consider this as a privileged moment for the institute in the sense we have been asked to host this event and as all of you know if this institute is today what it is it owes a lot to the three great personalities starting from henry wolken and slowly this being transferred to stan in and through duarts this is how the sequence goes these three people have made it possible in fact to realize the mission of the society of jesus one coming from abroad one from here in a different capacity and stan all the three lay the foundation we are actually reaping the benefits of that legacy i didn't have much contact personally except in the late 80s as a young scholastic i was sent to isi for a training for a week that was on thruster icon glass mask these are the two words i remember they were up to mark because that was the new way of the political movement developing in russia and glass mask Mikhail Gorbachev opening up to an you know, open society. That's the time we came here for a training to understand. But much later in 2019, as Alex mentioned, Stan happened to be here for about six months. His heart and soul was very often used to be in Anne's Duarte's house. He will tell me, Joe, I want to go. I said, okay, we'll go there. You can meet Duarte. And the scene that which... really uh, sort of an i look at it as sort of a wonder and marvel duat was not doing well he was in the bed stan will go sit next to him both of them will admire each other this was a scene i have seen they didn't have energy to communicate those stan would speak duat they would quietly listen and and will come and wipe the saliva and all that but both admire each other for whatever god has given to them that was a great scene i have witnessed the next when i heard duarte is no more he has reached its eternal abode when and told me i had the opportunity to go and bless his mortals then when i came back i was really finding it difficult to communicate to stan because those days he was in taloja once in 10 days he will call me i was his contact person then the next call when he made usually the call is for four minutes then afterwards he himself will say it's my time i will close it next time we will speak after second minute i told him stan with heavy heart i have to communicate to you duat is no more he just broke down he couldn't speak he said i can't speak now let's close the phone that was his emotion and later he wrote very few letters from prison only to close contact a few of them to ranchi friend to salaman and many of them to me he wrote one special letter to add to communicate what he wanted to say and i passed that to add and he wrote all along it is duat who supported me and said go ahead you are on the right track stan this is the great thing he drew very close friendship from duat in fact there was an opportunity for both of them to really work strongly together and they made this possible for the ordinary people to access their rights their dignity from this place this place became really really a meaningful relevant place because of these three great personalities so on behalf of the institute i honor him admire him 
and salute him for all his contributions to the institute, in and through the institute, the many people that the institute has served. Thank you. Thank you, Father Joe. Um, we'll now move to Hans Rudy Schweitzer, who was an old friend of Duarte, and I think he's going to introduce himself. So, Hans, the floor is yours. Kindly unmute. Dear friends of Duart, I will gladly tell you about our friendship with Duart. Back in 76, 77, my wife Johanna and I worked for a year in Bangalore. She worked as a psychologist with handicapped people. I worked as an engineer at the Indian Institute of Science. A friend gave us the address of Father Volken of the Indian Social Institute. There we met Duarte. From the beginning, we got along very well and often met us to discuss. Duarte was able to explain us the complex social and economic situation in India. His description of the work of ICI for the lower castes gave us deeper insight into Indian society. After our return to Switzerland, we kept in touch. As Duarte cooperated with French development organizations, he traveled to Paris almost every year and also to Switzerland. Every time we took up the conversation, we took interest in Duarte's work for Fedina and he likewise listened carefully what we told him about our work. Duarte told us also a lot about Anne and his family. Duarte had the exceptional ability to analyze society, to plan and implement actions, and to support people. His humanism and philanthropy gave him strength to carry out his work up to this old age. Thanks to his exceptionally positive attitude, Duarte supported us on our personal professional and political journey. Often he encouraged me, he worked, the work you do is important, Hans Roy. This was for the work in India and for my efforts to implement social and ecological sustainability in my company in Switzerland. In 2003, we traveled to India and Bangalore with our children, Andrea and Samuel. We wanted to show them where we worked and to visit Duarte's family and Fedina. Our children were deeply impressed. I would like to conclude with their words. Andrea, Duarte touched me with his tender charisma. His typical subtle smile expressed that very well. Samuel, in addition to his high intelligence and his very distinct sense of justice, I remember Duarte's modesty. His contribution to various projects in his description was minor, almost negligible. In reality, the contrary was true. We will remember Duarte as a good friend and hope that the many and beautiful memories may give Anne, her family and all of you comfort. We are very grateful for the friendship with Duarte. Thank you. Thank you, Hans. We will move to Corinne. Corinne, Corinne worked with Duarte at the ISI in the early phases and was an old good friend. Corinne, could you kindly unmute? Nalini, can you hear me now? Yes, yes, Corinne, yes. go ahead. May I, friends, may I please begin this little offering to Duarte with a few lines from a favorite poet. It was his favorite poet, Rabindranath Tagore. And Tagore speaks to those of us who are left here and says, how shall we look again happily on the sun or even feel the rain? 
without remembering how he who went ungrudgingly and spent his life loved too the sun and the rain. A bird among the rain wet gulmohar sings, but we, how shall we turn to little things? And, and I say this specially for you, and listening to the birds and winds and stream, for, for, for nor feels the heartbreak in the heart of things. You know, Duarte and I met each other many years ago, maybe 50 years ago even, when he came to Bangalore and I was at the Indian Social Institute. And, and I met him with, with Henry Falcon. All of us remember Henry Falcon, the man who had a larger heart than a head. And he, 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 he really introduced us. And I think we, you know, we liked each other immediately because uh, the, the, uh, the, the part of Duarte that nobody will forget is his laughter. Because as, as Rumi says, you pulled the weft out of the loom and wove the threads into a different pattern, but you still had courage for celebration. And I think especially of the six children, you know, that Anne and Duarte had before marriage, of course, it didn't come out exactly well, but it, they adopted three later on. But their selfless giving and the kind of patient looking and listening and laughter, the unconditional love, but always, always the celebration. Thank you, Duarte, for the many times that you have stood in solidarity. Have you have been in solidarity with us? Thank you for your voice, your deep insights, the wisdom of your mind, spoken and unspoken. Often your silent presence brought strength, gave inspiration. Thank you, Duarte, for the joy of your being, the generosity of your heart, and the, even I would say the gentleness or the greatness of your spirit. And so, as, as Gibran would say today with love, we give this to you with love. We give this to you with sighs from the deep sea of affection, tears from the mindless heaven of memories, and laughter, your laughter, which we can all hear now from the colorful field of your gentle spirit. Thank you. Thank you, Anne. And thank you to all his family, too. I remember a few of you, Carmo and Therese and Louise, and Lorraine, thank you very much, all of you, for, for Duarte. And thank you, friends. Thank you, Corinne. Thank you very much. And now we move to uh, Jean-Pierre of Ginot International. Jean-Pierre just said that he is not going to be present today, but he did send a message, which I will read out to you. Dear Duarte, October this year, we are in a youth hostel in west part of France. Cold and windy weather, outside which is no surprise to you at this time of the year. But warm and friendly is the climate within the group of students and young workers, while one of them relates her experience of meeting young people to understand their views about work, human labor, and professional expectations. And you are with us Dear Duarte, for this young woman is an active member of the Genove Network, the Youth for Nonviolent Initiatives. We both contributed to launch more than 10 years ago, and of which you have been the honorary chair. More so with us, dear Duarte, for it happens that this young French volunteer went to India, and thanks to Fedina, friends, could enlarge her inquiry, reaching some rural communities you have been working with for years and collecting testimonies of local youth. In that way, prolonging the solidarity links and the cultural exchanges between India and French activists that you have been so keen to promote. So indeed, dear Duarte, you are as ever close to us. You keep sharing and transmitting your full commitment 
to the challenges of liberating the oppressed and organizing the unorganized through people, education, and mobilization. Your deep respect for the equal dignity of all human beings, your subtle and sharp understanding of the complexity of human psychology and human society. You keep enlightening and encouraging our efforts to build a world with less violence, more justice, and many more smiles. Thank you, thank you, thank you, dear Duarte. From Jean-Pierre Dardot. And after Jean-Pierre, we have Dominic Cecil Varna, who is present. Dominic, would you kindly unmute? And Dominic is from the Fondation Abbe Pierre in France. It is with a great emotion, but also with great pleasure that I am going to tell you about Duarte. Thanks to Anne, his wife, for thinking on, of inviting me for this special moment. Please excuse me for my bad accent and my bad English. At this time, I was working at the Abbe Pierre Foundation, FIAP, which was funding the FEDINA project. This support lasted for 10 years. I met Duarte for the first time in 2004. We became friends. I was very impressed with this man, his simplicity, his intelligence, and his keenness. He loved people, mostly poor people, those who had nothing or very little. He wanted to help people, not by charity, but with real reflection that everyone should have decent living conditions. He was also very modern and feminist. I remember we had project with a Dalit woman. He was so respectful. He was a man of conviction. He was a politically committed man for a better world. He was an example to all of us. I would also like to say how important his wife was to him. He was what he was because his wife, Anne, was next to him. It was a couple. It was a family with their three boys. And do you remember he had a sense of humor too? He liked to laugh and share good times with friends. He loved French food and especially cheese. He was my friend and I loved him. Believe me, Duarte is not dead. He continues to live in our head, in our heart, in our memories. Happy birthday, Duarte. We don't forget you. We are so proud to have known you. Thank you for attention. Thank you, Dominique Cecil. Um, we will now listen to Duarte's sister from Portugal, who is present, but who has sent us her recorded message, Ludovina. I think um, Arul is going to play her message. Arul? My brother Duarte was a special being as a son, brother and friend. I fondly remember our childhood at our grandparents' house in Raya. I miss our games and mischiefs together, running up hill to catch cashews and at night picking babies with our brothers Kaitan and Babush, as well as with friends who used to spend their summer holidays in the village. 
For some years now, I'm living in Portugal with my family. But even though the distance, we could always count on him. And more than once, he found the time to come and meet us, even though for a short time. In 2019, during a trip to Goa, myself, my daughter Miriam, and our sister Terzinha went to Bangalore to visit him and Anne. We went to give him a hug that I knew would be the last, and so it was. I feel truly blessed for having had him in my life, and I know my family shares the sentiment. Thank you, Ludovina. And I think you will be followed by Louis. Louis was Edouard's youngest brother, whom many of us also knew in Bangalore. Welcome, Louis. Thank you, Nalini. It is really difficult to speak after so many wonderful comments made uh, that are so inspiring. I've had the pleasure of knowing many of you, and it's really wonderful to be here with you today uh, to share a few thoughts from a family perspective. My sister's tribute described well how Duarte's siblings felt about him and the exceptionally fond memories we shared of and with him from our years growing up together as young children through to our years as adults separated by geography but not in fondness and affection. Having lost our father very early, our dear mother Eliza re relied heavily on her children and we relied heavily on her. Throughout our, her life, he was a wonderful son, regularly returning home whenever he could visit our mother and she welcoming him with her characteristic warmth and affection Though he only came, when he came home, he was so tired for the weekend that he, slept, he spent a lot of his time sleeping. And mom would often say, why does he even come home if he's going to sleep for so long? All of us were exceptionally fond of Duarte. He showed to all his siblings and eventually to all their spouses, children and grandchildren, a warmth and love that was evident. He would have loved to hear those niece, grand nieces play and sing the way they sang today. Being nearest in age, he was close to our eldest brother, Kaitan, and they had a lot of mischief together, some of which Baita described. And being their elder brother, Duarte was also much loved by our two sisters, Baita and Terry, who are on the call today. When my brother Carmo found himself working in Europe far away from home, it was Duarte who helped him adjust to and navigate in this new environment. And when I was in Bangalore for medical school at St. John's, as luck would have it, it was about the same time that Duarte was also settled there, having recently returned to India from Europe to begin what would become a lifelong career in the pursuit of social justice as you just, as many of you all have just described. This period personally for me was a formative one and Duarte played an important role in shaping my outlook on the world and the importance I have placed in my life ever since on helping others and dedicating one's life to ideals that are greater than oneself. This brings me to his work and to his influence on me and countless others. Above all, Duarte was at his core a fundamentally kind and decent man. There was no one he was unwilling to help and he believed passionately in the innate values of dignity of every human being and these ideals to which he dedicated his life in career and in daily practice were obvious from the comments that we just heard. During our time in, together in Bangalore, his values in this regard were evident and throughout his life, these were the imperatives that he would impart to me and to almost everyone he met. He had an innate ability to make everyone he encountered feel appreciated and always feel valued. 
It was the noble pursuit of social justice and the recognition of value of each individual to which he dedicated his life. And there are countless numbers in India and beyond who are better for his passionate efforts. Before I conclude, I would like to take this opportunity to acknowledge and thank Anne for the special relationship she shared with Duarte and particularly for the wonderful care she took of Duarte in his final years. And your dedication to Duarte was evident and I know it will have me meant a great effort, comfort to him uh, to have had you by his side, particularly as he approached the end of his time with us. Duarte has led the sort of life that is difficult to measure. It is difficult to measure the impact he has had on his family. It is difficult to measure the impact he has had through his work. And it's difficult to measure the impact he has had on individual lives he has touched. And I'm forever grateful to that. But I can say with confidence that he was a wonderful son to our father and mother, a wonderful brother to his five siblings, a wonderful colleague to many, a wonderful influence on an untold number, including my wife, Lorraine, and our boys, Rohit and Rahul. What a profound legacy to leave behind. Thank you, Duarte, a comrade to many, an organic intellectual, and a brother to us. Thank you. Thank you, Louis. We know it's very early for you there in Canada. Thank you for being there. And now we'll move to Sebi. Sebi, who is the executive director of Fedina. Sebi, please unmute. Oh, Sebi is present at the ISI. Yeah. Good evening. Personally, I've known Duarte since uh, 79, about, for about 40 years. But uh, I worked with him very closely for the last 20 years. And uh, I would, I mean, he was perhaps the greatest listener. To me, I don't think he has in sense of made any speeches or taught me like that. But he has helped me to reflect. And this is the way he worked with Fedina. Somehow, I, I'm, I'm speaking on behalf of all, all uh, my colleagues as well in Fedina. He could somehow see uh, the pain if someone was undergoing that. And he, all he had to do was just ask one or two questions and they would pour out their hearts to him and he would listen. I think, I mean, th that quality I have not seen in anybody, the way he would listen. He never lectured. He helped us to reflect. And um, he, I mean, uh, I mean, there are so many things that you could narrate, but I think I would still uh, leave you all uh, and all of us with this. The quality of listening and helping us to reflect from our own experiences. And that has taught us so much. And uh, I do not feel, and most of us do not uh, feel, because uh, many of my colleagues still say that they talk to Duarte, they discuss with Duarte. It's somehow he's still with us. And when we discuss either strategies or what we are doing with the informal sector workers and their pains, um, we do mention his name and what he would have said. Uh, it's funny that many of them even uh, talk to him personally uh, about, you know, sort of reflect with him, expressing their views, almost as if he's present with them. And I think in that sense, he is still with us. Uh, he taught me some French, one word of French. And, and he was uh, super sensitive. Uh, his anger, he had anger. He was a highly political person, but very sensitive. The only uh, harsh word, and uh, the word he taught me in French, he used to constantly use, which was mien. <laughs> so that was a dua. I mean, it is something that he left with me. Uh, you, he never held a grudge against anyone. 
and um, it was for him everything was sort of political everything everything was structural everything was political personal was political so uh, we still hold him very close to our heart and we still talk to him in our everyday work thank you thank you sabin and now we'll it, uh, raja will follow raja was actually the uh, the driver who took duarte around who was a very close friend who was from uh, fedina and i am sure that he also would like to say a few words raja uh, hello hello நான் தமிழ் தான் பேசுவேன் ஆமாப்பா அதை பத்தி நிறைய பேர் பேசுறாங்க ஏ அனுபவத்துல செவன்டி நைன்ல இருந்து அவர் கூட இருக்கு அவர் கூட இருக்கு அவர் வந்து நம்ம மேல நம்பிக்கை வச்சுட்டாக்கா எந்த பொறுப்பை நம்ம வீட்டுல கொடுக்குவாரு ஏன்னாக்கா அவர் பாமாக ஒரு பொறுப்பாக கொடுத்தாரு இது எங்க போனாலும் அவர் கூட அழைச்சிட்டு போனாரு என்ன சொல்றது எப்ப பார்த்தாலும் சிறுசு முகத்தோட பஸ்ட் கேட்க கேள்வி சாப்பிட்டு கேட்பாருங்க ஆனா வருத்த வந்தாலே புரிஞ்சுக்குவாரு கஷ்டத்தை அவர் புரிஞ்சுக்குவாரு இவர் சொல்ல தேவையில்லை புரிஞ்சுக்குவாரு அவர் சொல்லலாம் நிறைய சொல்லலாம் எனக்கு பேச முடியாது அவர் தாய் போல மனம் உள்ள கொண்டு என் வாழ்க்கை ஒரு முக்கியமான நண்பர் ஒரு நண்பர் ஆஹ் நினைச்சு சொல்ல சொல்ல முடியாது என் வாழ்க்கையில முக்கியமான நபர் எல்லாருக்கும் வரலாம் நன்றி ராஜா and now we'll listen to sister elsie uh, sister elsie is a sister of the divine saviors she's a grassroots worker from tamil nadu in uh, tamil nadu and with who, who was closely associated with dwar elsie i think you're at the isi please say as as duarte was studying in france our sisters came to know him since he was a different person a person with lots of wisdom and knowledge our sisters approached him and asked to help us to prepare ourselves to come back to india so he organized several weekend seminars in the year 71 and 72 Duarte had a great task to make us understand and our congregation to to understand that India does not need one more congregation but India needs a congregation which does something new so what is this newness we had lot of reflections with Duarte and we made certain priorities in our involvement so we decided we will have a non institutional approach it means we will not start our own institutions we may work in other institutions as workers we will live and work in rural villages we will not go with an attitude uh, to the people with our teachers to teach them rather to learn from the people we shall work with the people not for the people we will respect people's culture and different religion we will not make any difference between caste or religion in our healthcare or in our education service give importance for searching and updating read the signs of the time and to respond to it in healthcare prevention is better than cure to cooperate with the like minded groups and movements having this in mind we started our first community in kanyamar district tamil nadu in 1973 every 3 months we had systematic evaluation dwar the help us to open our eyes to see the realities around us 
to understand the functioning of the society and to participate in building up a different society, a more humane society. He was a guide, a teacher, a mentor. All the more, he was a friend of all of us. We are very grateful to him for all that he was to each one of us. A great salute to our guys. Thank you, Elsie. Is Pallavi Mansing present? Uh, yes. Yeah. Yes, Pallavi, please. So uh, when I was told about this remembrance meeting, the moments I spent with Dwart over the past almost couple of decades came alive before me. They can never fade away because he had a unique and amazing personality always full of energy, always enthusiastic and having a very deep understanding of issues that we were dealing with. Though he would come to CEC to attend board meetings, he always made it a point to meet colleagues who were working and acknowledge and appreciate the work that we were doing. For me, his biggest contribution was the ability to address each labor issue creatively by making it so interesting and lively that you automatically start understanding it. His mool mantra to all of us was that wherever you are, just support organizing workers. Never be prescriptive. Talk to workers at length in different surroundings. Understand their viewpoint. Seek their suggestions and then think creatively. Blend their creativity with yours and go ahead. His emphasis used to be always think out of the box. That was the reason why he could handhold us and resolve even big crises so easily. He inspired a whole generation of labor enthusiasts and the strategies that have been used successfully to organize informal workers. Many of them have originated from his inspiration. He had an indomitable spirit to work and encourage others to work. If he had to point out any gap, he would do it very deftly and would say, just think again, constructive suggestions from him was something we all love to follow. In 2005, we had together organized an international campaign called the Global Week of Action for Trade Justice. Numerous other international campaigns we did for garment workers, and they were successful just because of his foresight and his efforts. In these meetings, I realized that even international trade union leaders loved to hear from him and took inputs from him. He has left a big void that can never be fulfilled. But yes, the memories of innumerable successful struggles he guided will always keep showing us the right path. Thank you, Pallavi. Um, we'll now go to Jairaj, who's an activist from Tamil Nadu. Is Jairaj there? Yes, Jairaj, please start. Tamil Prasita. Yes, Duarte Vanda and the article I deal with the other three. தமிழ்நாட்டில் 
எங்க பக்கத்து ஊர்ல ஒரு பையன் காலேஜ் முடிச்சுட்டு அந்த ஊருக்கு அது சர்ச்சில் தீண்டாம பிரச்சனை எடுத்துக்காங்க அங்க வன்னியர் கிறிஸ்டியன்களுக்கும் தெல்லி கிறிஸ்டியன்களுக்கும் பெரிய தகராக அப்படின்னா நான் அந்த ஊரை வந்து பாக்குறேன் அந்த பையங்களை பார்க்க முடியுமாட்டு வீட்டுக்கு வந்தாரு அவர் வீட்டுக்கு வரக்குள்ள எங்கூர்ல ஐம்பது போலீஸ் ஒரு நூறு போலீஸ் வன்னியர் வில்லேஜ்ல ஒரு நூறு போலீஸ் வீட்டுல வந்து சின்னில உட்காந்து நீ தான் ஜெயராஜா இந்த மாதிரி அந்த பக்கத்தில் உள்ள ப்ராஜெக்ட் நான் விசிட் பண்ணுவாங்க நான் பெங்களூர்ல இருந்து வந்துருக்கேன் அப்படின்னு சொன்னாரு எனக்கு அவருக்கு தெரியாது ஐஎஸ்ஐ பத்தியும் தெரியாது அப்புறம் என்ன நீங்க செய்யறீங்கன்னா இந்த மாதிரி சர்ச்சில் வந்து டிவிஷன் இருந்தது அந்த டிவிஷன்லாம் இருக்க விடாங்க பிஷப் எங்க பேரிஷ் பிரிச்சுட்டு சொல்லலாம் அவங்களாம் அந்த பழக்கத்தெல்லாம் மாற்ற முடியாது அப்படின்னு சொல்லிட்டாங்க இப்போ நாங்கள் சர்ச்சில் என்ட்ரு ஆனோம் ஒரு பத்து யூத்தை வந்து அடிதடியாக ஆயிடுச்சு ஒவ்வொரு மாதம் பெட்டில் அந்த தான் வந்து அப்போ வார்த்தை நிறைய கேள்விப்பட்டாங்க எல்லாத்தையும் கேட்டு உயிர்சு வேறு இனிமே அப்படின்னா அப்ப என்னமா நாளையில சொன்ன சாமியாரும் எங்க பிஷப் தான் எனக்கு எதிரி அப்படி கொஞ்சம் சிரிச்சாரு சொல்லிட்டு கனி கம்பு ஐஎஸ்ஐ அப்படின்னாரு ஐஎஸ்ஐ என்ன எங்க யாருன்னு இருக்கு கேட்டான் பெங்களூர்ல யார் நடத்துறது எனக்கு சாமியாரோட முடியாது எங்க வீட்டுல இருந்தா வரல பிளீஸ் கம் அப்படின்னாரு எழுபத்தி எட்டுல த்ரீ மந்த்ஸ் போச்சு முடிஞ்சது கோர்ஸ் முடிச்சுட்டு போகும்போதுதான் எல்லாருக்கும் அழகா ஆனாங்க இந்த லைஃப் அப்படி பர்ஸ்டான்னு பாருங்க அப்பப்ப அதற்கும் துவாரத்தை கோர்ஸ் முடிச்ச பிறகு திரும்பவும் எல்லாரும் போயிட்டு வரேன்னு சொன்னாங்க திரும்பவும் அதே கேள்வி தான் கேட்டாங்க ஜெயராஜ் யோசிச்சு ஒரு எண்ணம் அப்படின்னா இந்த சிஸ்டம் அப்படின்னு சொன்ன அந்த மூணு மாசத்துல வந்த பங்களாதேஷ் பாகிஸ்தான் ஸ்ரீலங்கா எல்லாம் வந்து நிறைய சேஞ்ச் எல்லாருக்கும் நிறைய சேஞ்ச் அப்புறம் திரும்ப போனோம் போனோன்னா இவர்கிட்ட என்ன கத்துக்கிட்டோம் அதை பூரா ஒரு செமினார்ல சொல்ல சிஸ்டம் சேஞ்ச் சர்ச்சு அஞ்சு இதெல்லாம் அங்க கத்துக்கிட்ட வாழ்க வாழ அதுக்குமே எனக்கு தெரியாது ரெண்டம் போர்ட்ஸ்ல ஒருத்தவங்க மைண்ட் சேஞ்ச் ஆயிடுச்சு என்ன அப்படி ஆயிடுச்சுன்னா நான் அந்த சமுதாயத்தை மாற்ற போறோம் இந்த மத்த சமுதாயத்தை மாற்ற போறோம்னு கத்த ஆரம்பிச்சேன் அப்புறம் எனக்கு என்னடா நம்ம கத்துக்கிட்டது தப்பா துவார்த்த கிட்ட தான் போகணும் இதுக்கு எப்படி வரலாம் அப்படின்ட்டு துவார்த்த கிட்ட வந்து வந்து டிஸ்கஸ் பண்ணேன் அப்ப சொன்னாரு கத்துக்கிட்டதெல்லாம் வாமிட் பண்ணாரு ஜெயராஜ் எதை நீ ஜீர்ணிக்கிறியா அதை மட்டும் சொல்லு அப்படின்னா எனக்கும் இந்த மாதிரி ஆயிருக்கு ஒரு கோச்சல் இது மாதிரி ஒருத்தவங்களுக்கு கொஞ்சம் மாறுச்சு அப்படின்னு அதுக்கு பிறகு பல கேள்வி இருக்கு எனக்கு அப்புறம் இந்த கோர்ஸ் ஆஃப் டயத்திலேயே நான் வந்து கம்யூனிஸ்ட் பார்ட்டியில வந்து மெம்பர் ஆயிருக்கேன் அப்ப வந்து எனக்கு எதுவுமே தெரியாது கம்யூனிஸ்ட் பார்ட்டினா என்ன தெரியாது எனக்கு பிரச்சனையில ஈடுபட்டதால கம்யூனிஸ்ட் பார்ட்டில சேர்ந்தேன் அங்க சேர்ந்து இப்ப உள்ள என்ன நக்சலைட் உண்பாங்க நான் துவார்த்தைட்ட வந்து நக்சலைட்னா யாருங்க என்ன நக்சலைட்டு போறாங்க சில பேர் அப்புறம் குழப்பவாதி இருப்பாங்க சில பேர் அப்புறம் வந்து டிராக்சிஸ்ட் இருப்பாங்க சில பேர் அங்க இதெல்லாம் வந்து கேட்கும் பொழுது பல விஷயங்களை வந்து என்னுடைய கேள்விகளுக்கு எல்லாம் சில ட்ரைனிங்கோ அல்லது வர வேண்டிய விஷயத்துலதான் வந்து அவர் எனக்கு சொல்லி கொடுத்தாரு கிட்டத்தட்ட எழுபத்தி எட்டுல இருந்து ரெண்டாயிரத்தி பதினேழு வரைக்கும் அவர் ரிட்டையர்ட் ஆகி போற வரைக்கும் இடையில நிறைய பயிற்சி நிறைய விஷயங்கள் வந்து வந்து கேள்வி ஒவ்வொரு விஷயத்துக்கும் மண்டல் கமிஷனை பத்தி சில ஷார்ட் கோர்ஸ் கம்யூனிசம் பத்திய கோர்ஸ் இந்த இது ரஷ்யா ஒரு கொலாப்ஸ் ஆகிற பெருசு வைக்காங்கிற ஒரு கோர்ஸ் கம்யூனிசம் பத்தி கோர்ஸ் 
இப்படி பல இதுகள வந்துட்டு நான் போகக்கூடிய வாய்ப்பு இருக்குது அப்புறம் பெடினாவுக்கு இருக்கும்பொழுது யூனியனைசேஷன் ஆஃப் இன்ஃபார்மல் ஒர்க்கர்ஸ் இந்த முதலாளித்துவ நகரத்தில் வந்து எப்படி தொழில் இதெல்லாம் நான் கற்றுக்கிட்ட பிறகு துவாக்கிட்ட வந்து அது அவ அதை வந்து மறக்க முடியாது அவருடைய லைஃப் வந்து இன்ஸ்பிரேஷன் ஒரு இது ஊக்கம் அது மட்டும் இல்லை கான்டெம்பரரி சுச்சுவேஷன் வந்து புரிஞ்சுக்கிறதுக்கான ஒரு அனாலிசிஸ் ஒரு கிரிட்டிக்கல் அண்டர்ஸ்டாண்டிங்க வந்து ரொம்ப வந்து சிம்பிள் லாங்குவேஜில் வந்து எங்களெல்லாம் பேச முடியாது ஒருவேளை நான் வந்து எழுபத்தி ஏழில் நவம்பர்னு நினைக்கிறேன் துவார்த்தே என்னை வந்து சந்திக்கலைன்னா நான் ஒரு ரவுடியாக மாறியிருக்கேன் இல்லை வந்து வேற ஒரு மாதிரி மாறி இன்னைக்கு நான் வந்து நின்று வந்து பேசுகிறேன்னா அதுக்கு துவார்த்தை வைக்க ஆரம்பி ரொம்ப நன்றி ஜெயராஜ் is prasanna around prasanna from uh, samudaya prasanna please identify yourself we can't make out are you there otherwise prasanna. we'll move to kiran kiran yeah, move to kiran i see you are there please yeah. unmute hello yeah we can hear you right. hello everyone uh, my name is kiran ravikumar uh, i knew dwat uncle uh, because of my mother who worked at uh, fedina Uh, who still works at Pedina and uh, so when i used to visit her uh, uh, since i was a kid uh, around 10 years old uh, i used to visit her in the office and uh, whenever i used to go to Pedina i used to uh, uh, meet with uncle he used to always call me into his office and then we used to sit down and always uh, talk to him usually every time it would be a different topic uh, so he always had the ability to make anyone feel comfortable uh, speaking about different topics every time and always the topics were always thought provoking uh, uh one of the most important qualities that i uh, always remember about him is that uh, even if you have a difference of opinion uh, with him he never used to say uh, no you're wrong uh, this is what uh, this is what is right like he used to ask questions make you think and reflect on uh, uh, reflect on what uh, what you actually feel about the topic and then make you understand uh, his point of view which uh, Uh, which i feel is one of the most important qualities about him and uh, i try to uh, uh, sort of inculcate that in uh, in the way uh, like i have gone about my studies where if i make a mistake in uh, uh, in something that i'm studying then i uh, try to ask questions about why i made the mistake so that that helps me uh, understand understand things better and that's how i try to uh sort of uh put some of the qualities that i've observed about him into into practice in my own life and on a lighter side like uh, i also know that uh, he's uh, very fond of uh, sweets and chocolates so uh, when i used to uh, travel to the us for my studies and uh, return back i used to get uh, like a bar of uh, dark chocolate which he always used to uh, enjoy and uh, so these are some of the memories that i uh, remember about him and i'd like to cherish them thank you Thank you, Kiran. Um, and I, we will move now to Tobias Hauser from London. I think who was an, a good friend and admirer of Duarte. Um, Tobias. Yes. Okay. yes. So that Nalini, if Gabriela is available, ask her to come next. Gabriela, you can join next after Tobias. Yeah. Okay. All right. I hope you can hear me. Um, thanks so much for inviting me and um, for being part here of this memorial. I met Duarte. probably about 20 years ago when i was still a teenager um for me a very long time ago and it was when i first visited india back then i was very interested in political activism and development work and and um india in general and indian culture and thanks to hanswati we we heard before and johanna um i was able to stay at Anne's and Duarte's place. And I could not have had more luck than that. So what in- initially started as a one week stay or a few days turned into essentially several months and I came back over and over again. And I almost felt like I became a part of the family for a while, which um, was an extreme privilege for me. And Duarte opened so many doors for me. Um, he 
took me to all of the different projects that Fedina was doing. I went to Kolar, he took me on the first day after I arrived to the slums in Bangalore and so on. And through that experience, I really could see very deeply into his work and meet many of um, his friends and co-workers who are here today. And I think these insights for a privileged Westerner was very deep and really changed also my views on, on the world and, and um, life. But Duarte was also really influencing me because he was a person and we heard it in, in lots of different um, of the, of the um, recalls. He was full of kindness and he was very caring for others. He put always other people um, before himself. And I think this personality and attitude probably even shaped me even more than um, all the work I learned about him. And this keeps influencing me. And he dwelt really in his attitude towards other people is very much a role model um, for me. And I'll try to implement his, his values and his attitude in my work in, in my daily life. And with this having said, I would really like to thank Anne and Duarte for being such good friends to me and, and being a guidance um, throughout my life. Thank you. Thank you, Tobias. And Gabriel, please, would you unmute now? Gabriel? Gabriel, please unmute and speak. Gabriel. Gabriel, you are still there. Can you unmute and speak? I think the uh, would Arul please unmute her? Yeah, yeah, she's she can, yeah, she can. I think she's not there. Proceed. You can proceed with your reading. Of okay. Yeah. In which case, does anybody from the who is present and who would really like to say something? We would have a few minutes for that. So please just unmute yourself. And in the meantime, while any of you get ready, I would like to read a message from Lizian, um, who is not present, but who sent her written message. And this is what she says. She says, I first met Duarte in Saint-Denis in 2003 and was impressed by his knowledge, his modesty, and his excellent French, which was an asset for our volunteers. We were looking for new partners. He was looking for funds. And I immediately thought Terre des Hommes should support Fedina. We met again in Mumbai in 2004 at the World Social Forum. I could hardly believe my eyes when I saw him surrounded by several women in saris. They were leaders in their own right. He was not the boss. These women were collaborators and they were not just there to impress a possible funder but because they were working with Duarte. It was obvious they admired him, but by that time, I was also an admirer. For him, quality was not just a word. It was a sincere fight. Uh, sorry, equality was not just a word. It was a sincere fight. I was convinced Terre des Hommes should support Fedina. I had promised Duarte I would visit Bangalore and meet with some of the groups of Fedina the year after. He asked me to present Ter des Hommes work to the groups. Some of you were probably at the first meeting in Bangalore. I had to share the work on economic, social and cultural rights. It was rough and Duarte intervened. I remember that he said, let her speak. I invited her to present her approach. Please listen. It was the beginning of a long and fruitful partnership. I met Duarte many times afterwards, both in France and in India. He was bright, he was generous, he always gave people credit for their good work and saw the best in them. 
he was able to give people the opportunity to make the most of their abilities. He hated being adulated, though he was admirable. He was certainly dreaming of a better world, but with his feet firmly on the ground. Each time I met him, I felt richer by what I learned from him. I admire the way he organized his succession, a rare and difficult task. I admire the confidence he had in women and their abilities to move forward. The last time we met in Bangalore, he was already seriously ill. I wish I were with you today to share the memory of an outstanding leader, a wonderful man, a beacon. So that was from Lizien from Thier Des Hommes. Has anybody requested to speak? From yes, now Lata will speak. Sorry? Thanks, Amma. Is there anybody else who is present there or online who would like to say a few words? Okay, Ashim is coming. Ashim. Yeah, please come, Ashim. So those were actually the moments that instigated in me to think beyond normal terms of union movement and community movement that I was involved in and I was associated with. And I also learned something which in my world, we are always very arrogant, we are always very assertive, 
and we tend to possess our profession in so many ways. It becomes a part of our practice, it becomes a part of our being. But I think it was persons like Duval and Ming from Duval. Every time I met him, I was amazed by his sense. When I went to his home and met him, I was really, I was nonplussed by the idea of what a caring family thing. And I think those moments brought a sense of humility. But I think I will end today with one thing which I really best appreciated, something that I've actually carried in whatever work I'm doing, is that he actually, I was a student who was to teaching all of your method. It was actually him and Father Stan who gave a deeper insight into what his all of your method was. And to me, that was a very, very deep understanding between what I read and what I experienced as a practitioner in the ground. But one thing that he actually also, which I would like to end with, is that he suggested always that you should be able to theorize from experience. I'm a very theoretically inclined person and I come to be very theoretically conscious to theoretical tradition. So I learned from him the art and the practice of theorizing from experience. And I hope I can carry that, that understanding that he gave to me and to many, of, many others into our movement as an organization. So I want to thank Duarte for allowing me to be a good theoretical person, a good sense, a good frame of humility in every work that I do. And I hope I can carry that well to peace. One last thing which I would really insist to all friends and family members, but notably friends and colleagues who are there. One of the last things that I remember before we came here and we were just discussing how to rebuild the idea of the of frame method to the urban world which has not been well investigated in India, to the working class world, and I hope we can carry all friends here some way that we can take it forward. Thank you, all of you. Thank you, Ashim. Um, and I think there's Annie Chotso who likes to say, to read a, something from Tagore. Please do so, Annie, and that will be the last contribution for this evening. Did I say the name right? Annie Choetso, who wants to share something from Tagore. Please unmute and do so. Annie, now you can unmute. Thank you very much. I will be brief. Everyone has spoken so beautifully. And uh, I just want to say I met Duarte through his precious wife, Anne. And um, I'm very moved, and I'm especially wanting to reiterate how exquisite it was that Duarte had the gift of deepest listening. And in our contentious times, I think this is one of the most important um, things that we need to, to remember. So I will read this with this quote from Tagore. Let it not be death, but completeness. Let love melt into memory and pain into songs. Let the flight through the sky end in the folding of the wings over the nest. Let the last touch of your hands be gentle like the flower of the night. Stand still, O oh beautiful end, for a moment and say your last words in silence. I bow to you and hold up my lamp to light you on your way. Thank you all so very much for this amazing memorial. Thank you so much. Thank you, Annie. I think those are very beautiful words on which to end. And so we will end with the song again from the group who is present there. Uh, will you all please come to the mic, the group from Karnataka, who's at the ISI. As we have the Canada sound now, very few of us are now here. Please, you can quietly come and pay floral tributes and come this side. Please move two by two. You can come and pay floral tributes and come back as they are sitting. Itty <laughs> 
friends i think we've come to the end of a very emotional touching evening remembering and celebrating dwar it has revived many many memories 
and friendships. And we hope that we will continue to keep this light that he kindled burning. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, especially to all those who spent the whole time with us, for those who could not spend the whole time, and for those who unfortunately couldn't participate, who informed us. As this ceremony is recorded, we will have the opportunity to share it with everybody. Thanks again. Thanks to all the family. Thank you, Anne, especially Anne. Thanks to you, Father Joe, and everybody who's there present. Bye-bye, everybody. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you all. Wonderful. Thank you. Great job, Nalini. <laughs>